Welcome to lesson four of our fairy tales and tall tales and our last lesson in fairy tales where we will be reading part two of Beauty and the Beast. We'll be finishing up our story from yesterday. Now, before we talk about yesterday's story, let's talk about yesterday's word work word and the other word work words we have been going through. Uh, as I read the word, you repeat it after me. Displeases. Curious. Fortune. Let's go through them one more time. Displeases. Curious. Fortune. One quick question about our words that we've been working through. What word has a prefix at the beginning. Now let's review really quick everything we have learned so far from our first part of the Beauty and Beast read aloud. So who are the characters in our story? In the last story, why did the merchant go into the Beast's palace? So the beast at the end offered to forgive the merchant for taking one of his roses on one condition. What was that condition? So before we take in to read our story, let's remind ourselves, remember, you know this story, but you know the story from maybe a movie you saw or maybe a, uh, another book that you read. How, how is this story different from the movie that you have seen so far? After today's read aloud, you should be able to identify characteristics of a fairy tale. And also, we're going to focus on two words today. You're going to show an understanding for the word constant and the multiple meaning word tune. So as you listen to the read aloud today, listen for, um, listen to see what characteristics of a fairy tale are included in Beauty and the Beast. A few days later, the merchant told his daughters what had happened to him in the rose garden at the Beast's castle. He told them how he had plucked or picked the rose and been confronted by the beast. He explained that he had promised to return to the beast and accept his punishment. Do you have to go? pleaded the girls. He explained that the beast had said that the only way for him to avoid it would be if one of them was willing to go and live with the beast. But I won't allow that, exclaimed the merchant. I will go, Beauty said quietly. No, Beauty, said her father. I am the one who took the rose. I shall go back to the beast. I would rather go myself for a hundred years than send you. No, father, said Beauty. I want to go. Her father tried to change her mind, but Beauty was determined. Determined means she felt strongly she felt strongly that should that she should go in her father's place. What do you think will happen to Beauty when she gets to the palace? A few days later, Beauty and her father returned to the castle. When she first saw the beast, Beauty could not help but shudder. Beauty could not help shuddering, but she tried to conceal or hide her fear. Good evening, old man said the beast. Is this your youngest daughter? Yes, said the merchant. This is Beauty. Beauty curtsied before the beast. Good evening, Beauty, said the beast. Are you here to take your father's place and live here with me in the castle? Yes, I am, said Beauty. The following day, the beast gave Beauty's father a trunk filled with golden coins and sent him on his way. As Beauty watched her father ride away, 
She held back the tears. How do you think Beauty feels after her father says goodbye and she is left alone with the beast? Beauty, said the beast, fear not. Things are not as bad as they seem. You have given yourself for your father's sake and your, and your goodness will be rewarded. Listen to me and heed or pay close attention to this advice. Do not be deceived by appearances. Trust your heart, not your eyes. What do you suppose the beast mean the beast means by this? The next day Beauty explored her new home. The beast had been right. Things were not as bad as she had feared. The palace was actually quite lovely. She found a huge library filled with books she had always wanted to read. She went for a walk in the lovely gardens where songbirds chirped her favorite tunes. Here tunes mean song. Tunes can also mean to make small changes to fix something. When it was time for dinner, Beauty was greeted by a staff of pleasant servants who prepared none other than her favorite meal. How is it possible that Beauty's favorite song were already known and her favorite food? How do you think Beauty feels now? Good evening, Beauty, said the Beast. Beauty was still startled by the Beast's appearance, but the more time she spent with him, the more she found that he treated her with kindness and courtesy. He pulled out her chair and sat next to her at dinner. He listened to her stories about her family and spoke kindly to her while they dined. The dinner turned out to be less painful than Beauty had imagined. When it was over and it was time to say goodnight, though, the beast turned to Beauty and asked, Do you love me, Beauty? Will you marry me? Why would the beast ask her, if, ask her this if they just met? What do you think she'll say? Beauty did not know what to say. She was afraid that the beast would be upset if she declined or said no. Seeing this, the beast said, Say yes or no without fear. Trusting his words, Beauty replied, No, thank you, as gently as she could. Very well, said the beast. Good night, then. After that, every night was much the same. Beauty dined with the beast, and the beast treated her with great kindness. She even began to enjoy his, this, his conversation. Little by little, Beauty got used to the way he looked, despite his appearance. Beauty found the beast polite, and his elegant manners put her fears to rest. It didn't matter the way he looked. But when the meal was over and it was time to say goodnight, the beast always turned to her and asked, Do you love me, Beauty? Will you marry me? Although she cared for him more and more with each passing day, Beauty always felt that, as hard as it was, the only answer she could give was, No, thank you. Do you think she will ever marry him? One night, the beast noticed a sorrowful look or a look of sadness on Beauty's face. Beauty, he said, I cannot bear to see you unhappy. What is the matter? Why do you think she is unhappy? Oh, she said, wiping away a tear. I am just sad because I miss my family. She paused. Especially my father. He is getting older, and if his health is failing, I worry that he may need me. If only I could see him just to make sure that he is well. But beauty, said the beast, if you leave me... I fear that I will never see you again, and I will be alone forever. Dear beast, said Beauty softly, I do not want to leave you. I would be very sad if I could not see you again, but I long to see my father. If you will let me go for one month, I promise to come back and stay with you for the rest of my life. Do you think he should let her go? Very well, sighed the beast. But remember your promise, and wear this locket as a constant reminder. Constant means it never stops. When you want to come back, simply open the locket and say the words, I wish to go back to the beast. When Beauty awoke the next morning, she was in her father's house. 
not the old country cottage, but a fine new house in the city that he had bought with the riches the beast had given him. Her father hugged her and wept or cried for joy when he saw her. Soon Beauty's sisters came to visit with their new husbands. They seemed to be happy, but Beauty could tell they were not. One sister had married a very handsome man who was so in love with his own face that he thought of nothing else. The other sister had married a clever man who entertained himself at others' expense. Do her sister's husbands sound like nice people? Day after day, Beauty enjoyed being with her father and doing whatever she could to help him. When the time came for her to return to the beast, she found that she could not bring herself to say goodbye to her father. Every day she told herself, today I will go back. But every night she put it off again. Do you think Beauty will ever return to the palace? Then one night, she dreamed that she was wandering in the garden around the beast's castle when suddenly she heard painful groans. She followed the sounds and discovered the beast lying on the ground and it seemed he was hurting. Beauty awoke with a start. It means she woke up suddenly. Oh, how could I do this to my poor beast? She cried. It does not matter that he is not handsome. Why have I been refusing to marry him? I would be happier with him than with someone like my sisters have married. The beast is honest and good, and that matters more than anything else. She opened the locket hanging around her neck and said firmly, I wish to go back to the beast. In an instant, she found herself at the palace. But where was the beast? What condition do you think the beast will be in when she finds him? Will it be just like her dream? Beauty ran through the rooms of the castle, calling for the beast. There was no answer. Then she remembered her dream. She ran to the garden, and there she found the beast stretched out on the ground. Beauty cried, Who oh, no, he is. She couldn't bring herself to finish the sentence. It is all my fault. She fell to the ground and took him in her arms. The beast lay still as Beauty's tears fell upon his face. Then he slowly opened his eyes. Oh, beast, Beauty sobbed. How you frightened me. Thank goodness you are still alive. I never knew how much I loved you until now, when I feared it was too late. Beauty's tears brought the beast back to life. In a faint voice, the beast said, Beauty, I was dying because I thought you had forgotten your promise. But you have come back. Can you really love such a dreadful creature as I am? Yes, said Beauty. I do love you. Then once again the beast asked, Beauty, will you marry me? Yes, she answered. Yes, beast, I will marry you. Before she finished speaking, a flash of light beamed around her. Beauty gasped and covered her eyes to shield them from the bright light. When she opened her eyes again, she no longer saw the beast. But there, lying at her feet, was a handsome prince. What has happened to my beast? she asked the stranger, noticing that there was something familiar about his eyes. Why were his eyes familiar? I was the beast, said the prince. A fairy put a spell on me and changed me into a beast until someone would agree to marry me. You are the only one who has been good enough to see past my appearance and into my heart. Beauty gave the young prince her hand to help him to his feet, and they walked side by side into the castle. They were married the very next day with Beauty's whole family there to help celebrate, and they lived happily ever after. So let's talk about some comprehension questions with somebody around you. How does the beast reassure Beauty that he is not as fearsome as she thinks? What causes Beauty to put off her promise to the beast when she returns to visit her family? Why does Beauty return to the beast at the end of the story?
What lesson can be learned from this story? I know a lesson for me is um, it's sometimes it's more important to look at somebody's heart than what their appearance might be. And then why would the movies, so we talked about this before, You, a lot of you have heard this story in the movies and stuff. Why would movies be different from the story? So we're gonna go through our two words. Um, the first word we're gonna be looking at is the word constant. So I'm gonna say the word, you repeat it after me, ready? Constant. So what are the two vowel sounds in this word? There are two vowel sounds, what are they? So you should have pointed out ah and ah. They're both short vowel sounds. There's also a couple blends in this word. S and T make a blend and N and T, N and T at the end make a blend. Let's say those sounds together. Let's do the S T first, ready? St, st. And the last one, the NT, 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 constant. What do you guys think constant means? What do you think constant means? So constant means something happens all the time or it's happening all the time. I love this picture because something that happens all the time every single day is a sunrise and a sunset. The sun will always rise. It's constant. It will always rise and it will always set. It happens all the time. Here's another sentence for you. The new puppy needs constant attention so it doesn't get into trouble. I had a student last year who just got a puppy and she was telling me about how the the puppy would always get in trouble, would always be into something when they were looking away. So they always had to look at the puppy. So can you think of something that is constant or always happening in your life? So in our second, our second word for today is the word tune. Now, I have a couple pictures to kind of help us out with what tune might mean. So what I want you to do is I want you to, I want to give you a minute. I want you to figure out what is the word tune mean in picture one. And then I want you to talk about what tune means in picture two. So tune in picture one could, is a song. You play a tune, you hear a song. Um, and then remember in our read aloud, Beauty heard a tune. It was our favorite song. The birds were singing it. And then number two, this picture is someone tuning up a bike, meaning there's this little small fix that needs to be made. Maybe it'll help the wheel stay on tighter, or maybe they wanted to adjust the chain to make it a little bit tighter. So a tune can also mean a small little fix. I know, um, what I had to do this past summer is there's a couple of little things with my car that I had to get tightened up and that's getting it tuned. There's just small little fixes, not a big fix, just a small fix. So this word tune has two meanings. That's why it's called a multiple meaning word. Well, that is the last of our fairy tales. We still have four more stories left in this unit one, and we're going to be next, our next read aloud, we are going to be moving into tall tales. We're going to be, a lot of these stories are based in America. So I'm excited for these ones and you get excited for some, some more fun stories in unit one.